In our lab for measuring melt temperatures, we use the melt temp. To prepare your sample for the melt temp, what you'll be doing is you'll be using a watch glass and putting a very, very small amount of your desired sample onto the watch glass. In order to make the sample as fine as possible, what you'll be doing is you'll be crushing the sample using a scoopula into a fine powder. The reason why you'd want your sample in a fine powder is because what you'll be doing is dabbing the open end of this capillary tube into the sample in order to bring the sample up into the tube itself. You'll be looking to put at least one to two millimeters of sample into the tube. Once you have some of the fine sample in the end of your tube, what you'll be doing is gently tapping it on the bench to first bring it um, down into the bulb of the capillary tube. To further pack the sample into the bottom of the capillary tube, what you'll be using is this long glass tubing. So you place the long glass tubing on a solid surface, whether it's the bench top or a stool, and you'll be dropping the capillary tube with the round bottom facing downward and allow it to drop through the long glass tubing, thereby compacting the substance at the bottom of the capillary. To begin with the melt temp, what you'll be doing is you'll be putting in a 400 degrees Celsius thermometer. The thermometer goes in the top gray shaft of the melt temp itself. With the well compact sample, as you can see in the bottom of the capillary, this will go in one of three slots located just in front of where the thermometer enters into the melt temp. To turn on the melt temp, ensure that the power level is at zero. The on switch located on the side of the melt temp can be pressed on. By turning on the on switch, you'll see a light goes on within the melt temp where you can actually look through and see your sample roughly 15 centimeters away from the melt temp within one of the three chambers present. To begin, if you have an idea of what the melt temperature or the range of temperatures you're expecting, you can turn the power level, which determines how quick the temperature changes or increases, to roughly six or seven. By watching the temperature on your thermometer, once you approach your melt temperature or the range of melt temperatures you're expecting, you may want to decrease the temperature and the rate of change based on the power level to between three or four. Because you expect melt temperature to be within either a range, you'll be looking for the first formation of a liquid as the first temperature that you record as your melt temperature range, and then the complete disappearance of a solid as the second temperature that you record within your range.